We're live. Time for Relay! Robot Town! <laughs> relay Robot in the mountains! Town. Relay in the space! We are Relay! <laughs> Can you relate to us? <sighs> hey everyone! Not sure uh, why Robot Town isn't playing. It says on OBS that it's playing for me. I'll figure that out another time. What are you talking about? Everybody heard Robot Town. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, you weren't broadcasting that, were you? Oh, yeah. Everybody heard <laughs> Robot <slime> Town. <laughs> so, before we begin, I'd like to just show everyone this, because... He enjoys his Pac-Man bow tie. It's a Pac-Man bow tie. Also, you might notice... I, I'm backwards. That's what people will notice. You might notice that uh, I got, got, got a bow tie back on. Yeah, because things happen, even though David didn't watch any of it. I watched some of it. I, I helped transcribe ATV this week. Alright, since we're playing show and tell, since the last time I was on the podcast, I showed everything in boxes. <laughs> Right over here is my uh, built PC. It's nice and beautiful. The case is a Corsair 570X Crystal Series. And nice. one should go buy that case. Hashtag Corsair. Hashtag Corsair Gaming. Hashtag ad. Not, <laughs> hashtag not actually. <laughs> hashtag please pay us. Corsair please sponsor me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, I'm going to crack open this dead elephant here, and uh, let's. That's not something you hear every day. I've got a blue moon. Got in the trunk. Dead of elephant. IPA. So. Uh, because I couldn't make a decision at the liquor store. Let's and get this started. Is what this is why I'm happened. drinking cherry coke in a Guinness glass. Ah, you're. I'm I'm not I, exciting at all. I'm drinking Coke Zero. Hi. I like Coke Zero. <laughs> but do you know what Coke Zero is really good with? Crack. Uh cracking. Uh, wow. You know what else? <laughs> That's exactly where I was going that. You know what everything is really good with? Sortilage. No. I don't have any. Get some. I don't know how. So welcome everyone. It's that time <laughs> again. Hi. Welcome. That time when we join oh, our brothers and sisters of the stars. It's that time when we join them and say today. Today is a day of plenty. Today is a day of information and infamy of casts and pods of streams and streamers. Today is a day to celebrate that which has brought us here and which continues to bring us here hour after hour, day after day, week after week, year after year, decade after century after millennia. Star Citizen, a game we talk about so often, but what do we truly know about it? Nothing. Jake, what do you know about Star Citizen? Absolutely nothing. Sounds about right. What do you know about anything? Uh, I know Star Citizen's got spaceships and guns. Mm. Very and knowledgeable. Farming. Very knowledgeable, sir. Shiver, what do you know about Star Citizen? I believe it's being made by that Chris Roberts fellow who made the Wing Commander series and uh, a few other games like the Strike Commander. It's some sort of first-person, multi <laughs> massively multiplayer universe that instantly transitions Finger between first-person space combat and that uh, on-the-foot malarkey. Uh, Nikara, what do you know about Star Citizen? How much time do you have? Uh, an hour and a half. Okay. Well, oh, in the uh, beginning. <laughs> <laughs> in the beginning, Chris Roberts, okay. Sean okay. Tracy, Sandy Gardner, Ben Lesnick, uh, David Swafford, and Ortwin. I don't remember his last name. Friar Muth. Friar Muth. There you go. Mm Decided, hey, we want to make video games again, and they let's make Davinja. 
And it had originally they're originally very stuck on the name, which is why we ended up with Star Citizen. Um, it was what Space Truckers and then Space Traders. Space Traders. Space and then Traders, which lives then... on the Star Traders uh, board game. <laughs> yep. Um, so what do I know about Star Citizen? Uh, it's fucking huge. Am I allowed to say that? Yeah, I guess I'm allowed to say it. Say whatever you want. Massive. It's, Eric, uh, it's our show. Okay. That's we get point. to decide what we say. Um, the... <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can be a merchant, a businessman, a factory owner, a Starliner pilot, Ha-ha! a stewardess, um, a miner... Uh, bounty hunter, a pirate. I don't think I don't think you can place um, someone under the age of eighteen. Can you not? A miner. Okay, you, you can be. You can you can play a person who mines minerals. David, leave. Um, Bye. I'm sorry. You can be a you can be a farmer. You can be a soldier. You can be an explorer or a scientist or a researcher or a weapons designer or a tweaker, which means several things, and I think you could be all of them. <laughs> I've got a question. Those those miners, are yep. they only playing on the Vandal Driller? Yes. <laughs> right. Okay. God. Um, so, uh, yeah, I don't think I should go on because... It would take the whole show. We did it! Hi, welcome to Relay Podcast, where we relay Star Citizen podcasts. Um, what if that's all we did? What if, what if, what if we just spliced together all the other podcasts? <laughs> <in one? laughs> That'd be amazing. It's, uh, it's podcast. I do want to end this, this introductory segment, though, by saying... Uh, so do what the introduction? Yeah, we're still in the introduction. Sorry. Uh, what what do you know? We're seven minutes in. Tell us. <laughs> tell us what you know about Star Citizen, because I want to hear it. Um, it's at the end of the day, this whole journey, experience, whatever. It's about us. It's about all of you. It's about all of us. Um, and I don't think that we're gonna get anything out of it more than we put in. So. I put in a dollar. I <laughs> put in several. Times, how many? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so we had lots that happened this week. Can we talk about it? Some stuff happened this week up to the point that I'm actually wearing a bow tie again. Even though I didn't watch it? I did watch it. All right. I transcribed well, it. Actually, no. Transcribing David, it doesn't count as watching it. David. Yeah. Let's begin with the first show of the week, Citizens of the Stars. Tell us what happened in the Citizens of the Stars show. I don't really want to talk about the Citizens of the Stars show. Why? I don't know. I'm... There was a concept sale announcement inside of it. It's weird. And uh, the, the two minutes of questions with Ben were kind of good. Uh, I'm glad that they, you know, featured people like Astro Pub because... My the, boy, Paul! Pub, pub, pub is good. But, uh, uh... Hey, people in the chat, if you want to watch some more Star Citizen podcasty goodness right after this show, 6 p.m. Eastern Time, twitch.tv slash the Astro Pub. He got partnered. Y'all. It's a good show. It's a good show. We've been, we've all been on it, I think. <laughs> yes. At some point. Shiver, yeah. you've been on it? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Eric's been on it because he took my place that yep. one time at the very I've been, least. I've actually been on several times. Um, I'm on there like pretty much every two weeks, so. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been on in a bit, but I need to go on again. I'm playing with the uh, the audio because people are saying that I'm loud and everyone else is quiet. So let me know if this is any better. Well, I can't help it. I'm just a loud, talky person. Yes. We okay. Know. Is this better? Am I loud enough now? Can people <laughs> tell me if I'm loud enough now? What? You're loud enough. Um, 
let's talk about what we actually saw this week because oh god i don't know i thought atv was uh pretty good i thought it was excellent uh i did not realize that he had he worked with han zimmer so closely uh jeff what's his face yeah what's, um, what's his last name uh jeff. his last name is zanelli zanelli uh <laughs> he he's worked on a lot of cool stuff and he's working on squadron 42 and okay the coolest part of that whole thing right was the um towards the end when um one of the sound guys from foundry 42 he was basically like, all right, so in most games, when you have dynamic music, it just yes. fade, it fade, it crossfades into the different layers, which works, but it's jarring. Yeah. Like, you, you realize that it happens. But they have constructed it so that the music will change naturally on, in the, act, like, where it would in a normal song, like... It's, if it if they can pull it off, if it works the way that they were talking about it in ATV, it's going to be. Showed it. I know, but like, we we have to see if it works in all situations in game, or if there are weird ones where it doesn't get like it doesn't catch it. But it, um, there was there was a a really good interview this week actually with one of the writers I think of the Expanse, and in it he actually talked about Star Citizen a number of times saying basically that like they think of expanse as kind of expansion to star citizen like that's that's the kind of universe they're going for in the expanse go watch the expanse but um one of the things he said was if they can pull it off what they're doing it's going to be like it's going to be a game changer if they can pull it off and it looks like they're pulling it off and that's what he said and i thought that was yeah you know um on the subject of that whole music talk while i was sitting there typing away transcribing the music talk i had a thought um i don't Never. generally care about sound in video games what's wrong with you i'm just it really de it really depends on the game right like some games it becomes repetitive and you just kind of turn it off but, like, for the most part, I don't care about sound design much, right? And okay. I was sitting there watching it, realizing that, you know what? This this segment doesn't really do anything for me. And then I was sitting there thinking about how, I think it was, like, a week or two ago, they were talking about lore. And a lot of people were like, oh, there's no content this week. What's going on? And then even this week, a lot of people were like, oh, a one-minute ATV, because all they care about is the thing that was put at the very beginning, the... Uh, you know, the pretty plants and the procedural planet stuff and the talk from Foundry 42. Lots of people don't care about sound. And I'm starting, I was sitting there thinking that, you know what? I get that because I don't give a crap about the sound in the game. Whatever it's going to be, it'll probably be good enough for me. But then I'm thinking about people like Mr. Six Fs and Caps, who is our sound guy, who's provided me all of our sound equipment, who edits Relay Replay, which goes up every Sunday, who used to edit this podcast back when it was an audio podcast. He gives a ton of shits about sound. And there's a lot mm -hmm. of people that give a ton of shits about sound. And it's not, yeah, Jake, Shiver, like, you guys care. Look at the size of the fucking speaker behind me. <laughs> bastards around me. I've got a I so, sp I so spend on the subwoofer the same amount people spend on a whole 5.1 system. Yeah, but here's <clears throat> here's how I feel about this. So, uh, Brad Shoemaker, of Giant Bomb fame and Gamespot fame, was talking about this during the Game of the Year deliberations because they have a category for best soundtrack. Right. And um, that's probably were, a hard one to do. Yes, because lots of people probably don't don't notice. They, they they always they always are like this is the one where we feel like the most crimes happen <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> because because things get eliminated and they're like no um but he was he was talking about it and he's like sound design is not something that you notice it's not something that's 
immediate, immediate and apparent to the player. But when it's done very, very well, it just raises the quality of the game by that much. And it, like, what? think of a game like, like Dead Space. That game has incredible sound design. And um, it was one of the first couple games that did, like, the um, the zero-G muffling effect. Mm -hmm. but where you didn't have no sound because there was still, like, like, you were attached to the hull. So the vibrations of sounds were coming from things walking on the hull of the ship yeah. through the hull into your suit and then vibrating the air in your helmet. One that I have noticed, like, I've noticed is Resident Evil, whatever it is, 7? Yes, 7. It's, oh my The sound God. design <laughs> in that is creepy as shit. Like, just walking up some stairs so and turning, and you know that there's a piano over there, and you just hear, like, two notes on the piano, and you're like, fuck! And there's nothing <laughs> there! <laughs> but it's it's the same thing with lore. Like, again, I don't really get into the lore of most games. I mean, you put a game like Warframe in front of me, which is kind of fun to play, and the lore is just like, oh, f go fuck yourselves. Just stop. Don't That's don't me even and Dota. don't try to lore this. Go away. Even Warcraft. You know what? I don't care. I know. I know. But there's a lot of people that do. Yep. And I think it's important for everyone to realize that, you know what, CIG, yeah, you know what, they're not showing tons of gameplay and tons of procedural planets and tons of all this, because they don't have that every week. But I, I'm actually really pleased with the new segments, because they're taking a lot of time talking about things that do matter to a few people. Like, they matter to probably a fairly large segment of the population of, of fans, right? Like... They've put a lot of thought into the whole audio thing. Uh, at least one of the engineers um, was in a big, um, let's call it alternative band, and now he's on the staff, and he made the Big Benny's theme, and that really does fit in very nicely with the Star Citizen universe. So they have got so these sort of small. things in mind. They've got a professional in for it. Yeah. It's such like a tiny little thing, but it adds like the atmosphere i will say one of the things i wanted to mention about sound design is it, it doesn't always make sorry no no go 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 um it doesn't always it can't make a crappy game good but it can make a good game great in my yes. opinion exactly um, it can also make a reasons... good game crappy yes it can um one of the things that makes follow three one of my favorite games of all time was that the music in that game which i know is licensed but they did an amazing job yes. on it um honestly whenever i hear that music from that game i am literally transported back into the game and i'm in the wasteland yep. like instantly and uh and it's you know they did an incredible job on that and so if you if you already have a very good game and its sound design is exceptional, it will make it like spectacular. On the on the point of Fallout, I actually found for Fallout 4 that I went back and and got all of the Fallout 3 songs and listened to them while playing Fallout cuz that to me is now the soundtrack of Fallout. Period. Mm -hmm. The the Butcher song and the Butcher Pete or whatever and like like that there are... There are some really good songs in Fallout 4 as well, but it still doesn't quite hold a candle to the third one. Mm -hmm. No, the, the, the songs in the third were just phenomenal. And I, I guess my problem is I don't notice which games do it well, but I noticed, like, have you ever played a game where every sound, like, every footfall sounds the same and you're just like, can I just stop walking? Yes, yes. Please, Absolutely. can I like, stop like I, walking? Most I MMOs. always really, I yeah. always really notice it whenever you walk across. Like you change the, the um, the stuff you're walking across. So you were walking across dirt, and now you're walking across metal, and it sounds the same. Yeah, it drives me nuts. And, it, and it, uh, Jake, you've got a good point there. MMOs are <laughs> in MMOs Final have... Fantasy fourteen. All your footsteps sound like you're walking on wet carpet. <laughs> <laughs> no, all but like. Them. 
MMOs typically have horrible sound design, and here you have Star Citizen, which is an MMO that's going to have, like, soon, soon at some point. <laughs> hey, 3.0 is kind of MMO territory. Well, it's pretty much an MMO. It's, it's early that. access MMO. But, like, you've got real sound design for it, and I think that's amazing. I... Um... Yeah, well, not only that, but you look at Pedro. I mean, just look at Pedro. Yeah. Pedro's actually working on Star Citizen for, what, like, four years now? Um, their first orchestral session was forever ago. Yeah. They have been working... He's been working around the clock on this game forever, and it's going to have... And it's important, because when you have a game as enormous as Star Citizen promises to be, you need a lot of music. Like, a lot, a lot. Hours and hours and hours and hours of it. So, you know, they needed that much time, but they have actually put that much time in. They have multiple composers. Like, come on. That's that's incredible. Yeah. Uh, there was another thing that uh, was shown off this week that I think we should talk about it briefly. What? Which is actually... Plants! The thing that most people were more excited about because they saw it. Uh, I'm going to switch over to our show and tell board. Oh. Look at that. Oh. Plants. There's plants on the screen. Guys. <laughs> hey, look, there's plants. Ah. I I'm sorry. We couldn't force him to take his meds before the show. Plants. <laughs> Hey, last week it was <laughs> dancing. This week it's whatever that was. This is guys. Just leave it. Guys. Just leave it alone. Oh no! Oh. This is what happens when I give up control of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> hey. You need to nip this in the bud, Jake. No! Um, let's talk about these plants a little bit, cause. I have to say, I'm really excited by these plants. This is the first I've really seen of something that looks like a plant. And most of them don't look too alien, but they look good. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, think they're on a separate branch? There's some aloe in there for, for your, uh, yep. for your, your sun <clears throat> sunburns. Um, I did not see any dank weed, so I'm disappointed <laughs> overall. Well, I'm sure it'll come up. Okay. But, like, um, there's but a lot. They, Go ahead. One, one of the things to notice, though, is that they're obviously developing hard right now for desert and savanna environments. Because those are all desert plants. All of them. Um, which makes it pretty interesting. They must be... I don't know what world this is, but they're developing hard for it right now. Tatooine. Isn't this just uh, the, the world probably. that we saw in the the gameplay demo? I know, but why is he developing Lear 3 so hard? Why not? <laughs> it could just be an archetype planet. Maybe. You know, yeah. it's the first death. They've got to start somewhere. So they they got to start somewhere. Started with that so we started okay. there. Um, can, I, can I just say that it would have made more sense if they'd start, uh, started in Stanton? <laughs> but fair enough. Actually, yes. I don't even know if Stanton has any planets that have plants on them. Nope. <laughs> not really. I like that nobody... Caught my common people reference. No, uh, I will reference? be back in just a second. Common people. A song by some band that was later covered by William Shatner, and the William Shatner oh, version is the definitive version of common people. If what? William Shatner ever does a version of a song, that is the definitive version yes, of that song. Yes, it's so good. I didn't say that. There's for knowledge. I just said it's the definitive version. Oh, God. She studied sculpture at so these St. Plants, Martin's these plants. College. That's where I, so I, I caught see her eye. Can move. Jesus God. I'm. Are you yeah. clocked out, and Jake? The whole the procedural, the whole procedural <laughs> pixel, uh, like leaves being generated and uh, like snow, like they're actually yes. having procedurally generated snow. Whereas <laughs> like um, Skyrim's is the traditional yeah. visual trick. It, it's not an actual particle it's just a texture that has you know that's got a set around uh, the character rather than actually 
snowing in the, if that makes any sense to any of you. But like the leaves uh, when, falling are yeah, particles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The leaves falling so that are particles. Means that the when rocks. When you walk, you and your character or any character walks into them, they'll stick to the character rather than just clip through or something stupid like that. But how will the um, engine handle all that clutter? Because that's quite a lot of leaves. They're going to pile up, and if there's seasons, autumn, and like, how far is this going to go? Will you? Will it be autumn on a planet? I'm going to be able to kick up leaves as I walk around, or I would and, and if so, that. how the hell is that going to run? I I don't know how it's going to run. Even if you don't like, even if they disappear when they hit the ground, there's still like, let's say it's raining and leaves are falling, and there's a rock in the distance kicking up some dust at the same time. Does the dust get tampered down by the rain? Do the leaves get hit by the <laughs> rain and move? What the? <laughs> Like, I don't have a freaking supercomputer in my swear house. swear on the internet. What? You can swear on the internet. I know, David. but I've already sworn, like, four times this yeah, cast. Yeah, there are some things that you could do on the internet that you just shouldn't do here. <laughs> I, I feel like I've, I've hit my limit of saying fuck today. Shit. Well, Acid well. well. <laughs> apparently needs to have a taco too, Shiver. So. I know. Um... Well. um other anyway, things. one of the things I wanted to mention about this whole topic was that I do agree with some people. I, I, I think it's really cool. It's a really neat effect. I, it needs to be able to be... It shouldn't be on all the time, though. Um, and the way they showed it in the episode, it looked like if you walk into a snow environment, it, it is snowing. Period. Um, I think that it needs to be something that is occasional. So I, I think they'll probably because do that. But this oh. is a this is just, you know... For those of you that don't know, those of you that live, you know, south of the border, um, even in Canada, of that wall. even in Canada, it doesn't snow all the time. Exactly. I, I know that this is weird information for everyone, but even in Canada, Jake, are you okay? Even in the, no. even in the rainforest, it doesn't rain all the time. Jake, you wanted to say something about procedural planets? No. I was going to move on. Mm. Okay, move us on. let's move on. Uh, also announced this week, slash, I think, this week, maybe, uh, servers, regional yes. servers happening in 2.6.1. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. It doesn't matter for us, but... <clears throat> Holy crap, that's really, really good yeah, for uh, Shiver, we have a Shiver Bathory here who can't play Star Marine properly, so... I mean, no, mm. it does because then we have to deal with their pingy butts. True. This is also true. But then it means what we can't... What is ping? <laughs> uh, yours is about 700? You're not far off. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with your crappy internet. Yeah. Doesn't help. It's, again, this is, I mean, this is something that's coming out of Lumberyard, right? Probably. Um, well, most likely yes. without... Well, I mean, it's part of their agreement with, with Amazon. Yeah. It's, it's part of their agreement with Amazon with, with AWS. I think that they're probably getting super cheap servers from them. Yeah. <clears throat> well, it's like um, we discussed, it's probably uh, part and part of a parcel of Amazon get the use and technical expertise from CIG when it comes to the engine. CIG get the use of Amazon. We scratch their back, they scratch our back. It, yep. You know, with as minimal cash exchange as possible, one would other. hope. What? This, uh, the fact that they're doing that in 2.6.1? Yes. Uh -huh. they, moved um, it, they moved it up. The, well, and also, this actually meets the $25 million stretch goal, which was Enhanced Alpha. We'll use additional funding to build a wider alpha test than we'd originally intended for. The initial plan was to first launch server in nor servers in North America, which they did, and then expand to areas such as Europe and Australia to decrease latency in these areas. And now they're doing that. So, they're meeting, they're meeting yep. the $25 million goal question this was not answered to me yet, but i haven't looked at the the production schedule at all mm. um is mega map moved up or is that still further it's in out? no it's in 2.6.1 it's already done completely oh um fancy so it, 
Uh, actually, they're done every feature for 2.6.1 except for UI bug fixes and the grenade indicator, which is also UI. Oh, that's <clears throat> not, not so bad. Um, and then, so what we did find out that is kind of interesting is 2.6.2 still exists, but what, now we have no idea what's in it. Because the only thing in it was the regional servers. Even. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, we'll, we'll have to see after 2.6.1 comes out. Is the new patching still, Delta patching still coming with 3.0? Or is that being as moved up? As far as we know it is, the most recent thing we've heard is that they have an early build of it in Frankfurt and they're evaluating it. That might be something to come with 2.6.2 if they still do it a test Maybe. of delta patching to see if it works before they go live with 3.0 which is going to be huge and you don't really want the delta patching <laughs> breaking on the launch of 3.0 my thoughts anyway oh um israel this point it's a, oh, something important um the single player part of the mega map is coming with 2.6.1 okay so you can switch you can switch back and forth from any two point uh single player mode uh without um without reloading okay so i guess that was the week um hurricane yeah um you get those in canada take cover uh sometimes uh, on the east coast east coast yeah yeah ontario gets um, tornadoes every once in a while Occasionally. alberta's part of tornado alberta's part of tornado alley technically yeah which is where i live um jake are you buying one no uh what is it the anvil hurricane it's a heavy fighter uh it's big slow Maybe. and very very powerful is it missiles or is it we don't know all we know is that it's a heavy fighter uh i mean i'd That's rather it. have a lightning but agreed lightning is pretty damn sexy <laughs> yep and okay guys i need to point this out because no one noticed it and and everyone put it, they put it out there, they didn't talk about it, they didn't do nothing. In the uh, anniversary live stream, the whole ship show thing, yeah, Galactic Tour, all that stuff. Yep. Um, in the promotional material for that, they had the F8 Lightning, and no one caught it but me. Because I'm one of the few people who've seen one. <laughs> I've seen it. Yep. Yes, as have I. Actually, it, I think there are, there are a few pictures rolling around of it, but not many. Yeah, but it's it's done and it's it's good. Mm -hmm. It's been yeah, done it's for good. A while. They've shown us was an old concept. Hmm. What they've shown on ATVs. They they, they, they accidentally say... they accidentally released an old concept of it in one of the style guides. And I don't think it was supposed to be revealed then, but it's freaking it's, it's a it's a good looking ship. They had um, at CIG they had a, like a big painting of it hung up. You know what? Talking of ships, so uh, Cass, my girlfriend and I have been watching through all of the Marvel Cinematic Universe in order. Yep. We just finished. We we've just made it to Guardians of the Galaxy. Are we talking awesome. about the Milano? Because that ship is awesome. The Dark Aster. Oh, the Dark Aster is also awesome. Mm. Well, yep. and, and also she, awesome. she was actually making an interesting point here. And I was trying to think of ships in Star Citizen that, that matched her point. But she was basically saying that she thinks the Dark Aster looks amazing because it doesn't look like a typical spaceship. Yeah. That was the genius of the Borg Cube. Yeah. But but I'm sitting there and I was trying to think what in Star Citizen doesn't look like a typical spaceship. And the only thing I reclaimer. could the scout well, the reclaimer was the only thing I could I could bring up. The reclaimer is basically a giant industrial machine in space. The scout looks it's... like like a bug. I feel like there's a lot that would have like the Orion wouldn't have looked like a sp if they had gone with the, the Orion looks like Babylon Five. But if they had gone with the asymmetrical cockpit on it, which they might still do. I mean, it's super think... concepty. Right yeah. Now. But um, uh, I, I thought that was interesting talking about you know how the Dark Aster is just doesn't look like a normal space. Actually. Ship. 
Actually, the, we've we've only seen some super early images of this stuff, but the the Xeon capital ships that we yeah. that they originally concepted were didn't really look like spaceships at all. Um, they were these gigantic vertical yeah ships. They were weird. Also, um, a, they look something... like ships from uh, from oh, what is that game? Oh, Homeworld. Yes. <laughs> yeah, totally. I knew I knew what you were. That was you. impressive. Yes. Um, you also, know, I kinda a very hope... good note for the not spaceship spaceships is the the Alliance capital ships in um in Firefly. The yeah. floating cities. I like yep. those. I kinda hope that they cool. do something like a Vanduul sphere or a Banu sphere. Uh the um the Asari ships in Mass Effect are also kind of weird, mm -hmm. like big orb looking things. But I, I remember sitting there and talking to her about it, and and being like, one of the things that that's most interesting about the star lots of the star suits and ships is that they are concepted by the people that make these ships for movies, right? Yeah, totally. and that's like that is a good way to do it because the the cons the ships that are in some of these movies are amazing. Like, who would think of the Dark Aster in that? Like, it, it's such a neat design. It's complete... the Nova ships are pretty sweet too. They are, but yes, they are. And I don't think we'd ever see something like that in Star Citizen because that that ship, the Dark Aster, is completely useless. 90% yeah. of it is completely <laughs> useless. What yeah. you should, is the you point? Should show, you should show uh, our, our, our dear friends a picture of the Dark Aster. Uh, I need, actually, I wonder if I can. Let's, let's try too quickly. It's made of rocks, people. It's, it's ridiculous. I'm it's gonna... made of rocks. And yeah, rocks... It's it's halfway between a piece of obsidian and a Twizzler. <laughs> we'll twist it up. It's 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 messed up, but it's so cool at the same time. It's cool. Uh, let's see if I can save image. Uh, da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. Save. Let's go up to here. We're going to go to the show and tell mode. We're going to turn off the from briefly. aliens. Now, can I That's freak out about the dark aster like you freaked out about the plants? I love that sure. shit. Okay, no, not going to. Ah. I got to save everyone's ears mm -hmm. from exploding. Hey, look, it's the plants again. <laughs> <laughs> Apologies for my honking phone. Like it's just a You're going to catch that road one run one day. It's... Nope. Oh, don't even talk to me about Event Horizon. Just screw off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck Horizon. you all. No. What's wrong with Event Horizon? Everything. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's focus on the Dark Aster. Yes. Now. Thank you, Eric. God. I don't know. I, I, I find there's something really interesting about that ship. I know it's entirely superfluous. All the spinny things are just made to look cool. But it does look pretty cool. And the only thing in Star Citizen I could think of that kind of matches that that weird, like, not looking like a spaceship look is the Reclaimer. Yeah, the Reclaimer basically... And I think that's why it has such enormous engines. I think they literally took an industrial machine from a planet and just, like, stuck engines on it. And they're like, go fly! <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, the engine, uh, you guys may, may not realize this, but the engines on the Reclaimer are gigantic. <laughs> Actually, I guess we should probably put up a picture of it, too. I'll grab one. I'm working on it. There's, there's like, only two concept images that are any good. Which what? is of the other reclaimer. Oh, I There's... love the chat. Basically, at the moment, every, everyone's really incredulous to the fact that you hate Event Horizon, and they they are right to feel incredulous. Again. I don't like scary movies. There you go. Done. Scary. It's... Yeah. You sound very upset. Trevor. I I really don't like scary movies. <laughs> I've I've been having 
enormous amounts of difficulty even just playing Resident Evil 7. Resident Evil 7 is terrifying. It's, it's terrifying, and I do not do scary. So, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I don't, I don't do scary. I, I panic. Well, I freak out. I, if you ever watched a real horror movie, you would probably die, wouldn't you? <laughs> I don't watch real horror movies because they're scary. They're not. They're hilarious fun. Anyway, anyway, sorry. Sorry. Um, yeah, actually, it was kind of cool because we hadn't seen the Reclaimer in four frickin' ever. Um, and then at the really neat, um, was it the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo, Expo or whatever? Galactic Aerospace Expo? For the yeah. um, anniversary sale, there actually was an image of the Reclaimer way off in the background in the fog. And it looked um, huge! And it was just massive. It's enormous. But I, wanna... I mean, it eats sh it eats ships. Okay, guys. Everyone like, needs to remember be... how big this ship is. Like we've all the biggest ship we've yet seen still is the Starfarer. More or less, yeah. I mean, the Reclaimer is like enormous. <laughs> uh, I can't remember. It's like slightly bigger than the uh, Polaris, isn't it? Yeah, it's slightly longer, I think. But it, it's not about, it's not the longest ship, but it's also very tall and wide. Like, it's just a big, bloody ship. I, 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 I think I was looking into it, and, like, the engines are, like, each engine is, like, the size of a Connie, or bigger. Like, it's huge. I cannot, that, that is still, I really want the Endeavor, because I, the Endeavor covers everything in Star Citizen. The Reclaimer, I still think, might be the ship I'm most excited for. I have one now. Oh, yeah? Yeah. You, you gave in? Uh, well, I didn't really want to retaliate her that much. Yeah. So, it sacrificed its life. It, that's that's a good one to make. I Let's, couldn't uh, give up the tally. It reminds David? me too much yeah. British aircraft. I linked you a picture of a size comparison, including the Reclaimer, if you want to put it up. Uh, is that the... Yeah. Sailor Jazz. I will put the size comparison up in just a second. Just to, also, I want to mention to people: this is its size before anyone has started building it, and almost every ship, <laughs> has almost every bigger. large ship, has gotten bigger once once they actually get their hands on it. Yeah. By the mm -hmm. way, in the Galactic Tour videos, did you see the Polaris? They snuck, they seem to have snuck in quite yep. a few ships, but they snuck in the Polaris in the background of one of them as well. Yes, they did. But like, mm. like each engine there is about the size of a Connie. The two front engines are, are Connie sized, and it is as tall as an Idris. Yeah, it is gigantic. It's it's. Um, but how much of that is going to be um, machinery, and how much of that is going to be habitable? How much Both of the of how much of the Idris is the launch deck? I mean, well, I mean, yeah, but the whole point, point of it is that how how imposing the Reclaimer will look in the yeah. game. Um, and it, when your I mean, when your ship is destroyed spaceship. and that thing hovers over you, looking down at you, and you're still inside your little tiny, you know, you're 300, supposed to wait for people I mean, to get out of the ship before you reclaim them, right? No, <laughs> nope. That's not his. That's not at all. fun. God. Um. Yeah, put this one up too. Oh God, there's so many. <laughs> I can't put all these images up. Of course you can. Just one at a time. Uh, it takes a lot of work. Okay. Apologies. Damn straight. So, are we are we coming up on question time? Did we? Want I to think do we are. Uh, I'd like everyone to ask some questions. Uh, exclamation mark! Question mark. There's a form there. Ask us some questions. It's just, uh, it's just the right thing to do. Oh. And, uh, <laughs> look at that. Are we still on the comparison shot here? We are now not on the comparison shot. We are now on a reclaimer shot, but I can go back to the size comparison if you want to talk about it. No. 
we're on this this reclaimer shot that's just <laughs> <laughs> oh. okay, you're I'm watching you resize this image. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it live, folks. Doing it live. You know, we're live. First, you make it small, then you put it in a corner, and then you make it big. It's the easiest way to do it. Um, but uh, no, I mean, you look at the reclaimer there. The, the amazing thing about that ship is it has, first of all, it has a gigantic claw out in front of it. Um, it's enormous, it has huge engines, and on top of all that, it's full of guns everywhere. Yep. <laughs> I imagine the armor on it is going to be pretty hefty as well. It's it's going to be something else. I'm... It's not so... I don't think... You, you're going to need an organized party effort to take one of those things down. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you get too close to it, it'll just grab you with the claw I like and, how... and shove you into the, the reclaiming bay. <laughs> I like how the people in, in in chat are still talking about scary movies. They are. Yep. They, they're they all over the place. <laughs> I think... Ask questions. Yeah. Ask me anything. Ask, ask some I'll questions, everyone. It, it is time. It is time... For question time. Wait, that, that sounds horrible. It's time for questions? Time. It's question time. Question time. Question time. Question time. Time for questions. Question time for questions. Ask us some questions. Uh, let's start... <laughs> sure, like that one. <laughs> let's start with the first question here. Uh, Brivals asks... Ah! <laughs> the ever yes, present ah. Brivals... Uh, <laughs> How do you like the music becoming grim when you're in a kind of situation and thereby signaling that you're likely to die? Yes! It's motivating! <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Try not you to can't die, get please. that in um, Arena Commander at the moment. It adds a bit more tension to things. I like it. I... yeah. And I, I hope that it's not just you're about to die from ships. Like, I hope... At some point, if you're like, if you're gonna crash into something, like say you're navigating the inside of an asteroid, I hope I hope it ramps up not just for enemy ships, but for other tense situations as well. You know? Absolutely. I, I really like that. I mean, and if it's done well, it can be incredibly jarring, like like in a good way. Yeah. I, you think you're doing fine, and then all of a sudden it's like, dun dun dun, and you're like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, clip that, everybody. <laughs> Thanks in advance, fast cat. <laughs> uh, so, Brivals also we asked... still have just the reclaimer picture here. Oh, yeah. Sorry. I forgot to switch us back to, <laughs> like, us. Hey! We're back! Hey, it's also freaking out for some reason. Is it? This picture. For me, oh. it is. Well, it's gone now. It's good. gone now. Uh, so, Brivals also asks, I know you probably get this a lot, but I genuinely want to know if you think CIG is stretched too thin by supporting two online game modes, developing an MMO and a single-player game. Do you think they should focus... Uh, one second, one second, let me expand this. Uh, instead... Oh, uh, wait. God, this is a long question. Um, Do you think they should focus instead on Squadron 42 and the MMO instead of these other side projects? They've got four studios, man. Plus, do... plus <laughs> behavior. Yeah. yeah. And turbulent. Plus, a lot of what is done for the single player in some way, shape, or form can be handed over in, straight into the multiplayer game. Like, definitely the art assets and things like that, which take a lot of time. Animations shared as now, much as can be shared is shared so i, I i'm gonna make a bit of an analogy here and it's probably crap but i'm gonna <laughs> do it anyway um it's... essentially what they're doing is building a castle and a town at the same time but in the, in the meantime they're building all the bridges and the roads the and they're bridges... also they're also they're... learning how to smith and yeah mason Exactly. So, but, you know, the bridges and roads are going to be part of the town, but they're building them now so they can use them to build the castle. 
Do you understand what I mean? They're building these little bits because they have to build the bigger bits. This um, is this is actually something. They're all that, part of the same thing. This is actually something that they went over a long, long time ago, and it was basically like when they hit, I think, around twenty million dollars in funding. They were like, "We can do all of Squadron Forty Two right now, no issues." It's when they when they decided to go straightly crowdfunded, not have any outside funding at all, right? Yeah, but people kept giving money and because we sat there and kept giving money and kept giving more money to the point where at what like 140 something now 142 I, 142 i don't even keep track of it anymore it's so massive um they were like no if we want to do this right we take the time we do both of them at the same time. We make sure that the gameplay that you're getting in Squadron 42 is the same gameplay you're going to get in Star Citizen. They're going to feel the same. They're going to look the same. They're going to be the same game. And yes, it does take a lot more resources. It does take a lot more time. And it's it's the reason Squadron 42 isn't out yet. It's because they're making both at the same time but if you want to do it right and that's what they want to do as as much as i hate it as much as i wish the game was out now and i wish i could play it launch right now that's the reason they're doing it because they want to do it so that it feels the same yep now i want to mention to people because i haven't done an update on this in a long time it should be noted they didn't have a concept sale or really any sales of particular note in january um nope. They still made one point seven million dollars. Yep. Um. So the next question is, uh, what is Eris's tea thingy from last week called? Um, I can actually show you exactly what it's called. It is called. It's it's from a specific store. You can probably find it elsewhere, but I can only link to this store, which is where I bought it. It's from Tivana. It's called a Tivana Perfect Tea Maker. Yep, I've got one. They're, there you they're go. actually pretty awesome. Uh, it, did you did you go on stream and then yes. put it on your mug? Damn yeah. right I did. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's uh, if if you live in the U.S., you can find Tivana anywhere. Uh, you might actually be able to find some of these in a Starbucks, um, as well. Uh, former Starbucks employee here. Uh, <laughs> they're they're good. I like them. They're awesome. Yeah, it, it's a very easy way to brew loose leaf tea. Yep. And it's easy it's, to clean. You just like scrape yep. some of it out, then rinse it and dump it. Yep. Wash it every few times. Tivana, Starbucks, sponsor us. They won't I know. at all. I know. They don't need to. I know. <laughs> anyway, it's a good tea maker. It's good. Are um, you saying they don't need us? Who does need no. us? CIG. Cherry Jesus. Coke. These I love cherry people. coke. Send me cherry coke. Cherry <laughs> coke. I like cherry coke. So, Fastcart asks, uh, I went on the CIG tour in Austin last week. How do you guys keep your mouth shut about the stuff you can't talk about? <laughs> oh, man, it's hard. We've seen some crap, man. We've seen it. When uh, now do you? I got I, Jake. Do you remember when me and Vince were got and you were? Yes, yes. I was also yeah. there. Yeah, yes. I was there. Oh, yep, <laughs> that was good. There's Guys. things that are there's things that are done should, that we don't we know stop about. Man, people though. <laughs> oh. hey, hey, that thing we saw in Foundry UK. Oh, no one went with me. <laughs> hey, oh. I went to Foundry UK on my own with with uh, with six Fs. Oh, it was years ago. Years, it was, years. but back at that point, we saw Gian, uh, Gian writing and the 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 scout, like awesome. a year before it came out. Yeah, I I can't talk. I don't. I think the only thing that I can talk about that I saw was the Polaris. I can now talk about everything I saw at Foundry because, but that was that was CitizenCon two years ago, and w when we went. At CitizenCon two years ago, we saw them testing out 2.0. They were, like, we, we watched them play 2.0 in, in the Reclaimer and, and floating around and all that. And it was, yeah. It's hard not to talk about it. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good yep. luck. 
<laughs> Fast um, cars. So, our next question. Uh, Oxize asks, uh, when these big ships get in-game, how do they deal with physics? They can't just speed up like an Avenger. Um, no. And they should, I mean, that's the thing, right? A big ship, in my opinion, should feel big. They should accelerate slow. And they should be slow. But that's just my personal opinion. I mean, I the Starfarer um, Star feels pretty slow, doesn't it? The last time I flew it. Well, you don't want it to just feel slow. You want it to feel heavy. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And also important is they, they are already going to do this, but it is important that a un unencumbered cargo ship should feel much lighter and more nimble than an encumbered one. Yeah. Like a hull E should fly pretty well when it's completely bare, but when it's fully loaded, it should basically fly like a space whale. The thing that they're doing and the thing <laughs> that works the reason that I have actually so much faith in the way that they're trying to do this is they're doing it all based on the actual numbers. Like they're, it's an actual simulation. It's like we give it this many thrusters. It can do this much. Each thruster can push this many pounds of weight this quickly. And that's how they tune it. They just, it's based on the thrusters on the ship. So I don't, I don't see it being an issue, but. Jake, you've flown some of the larger ships. Yep. How do they feel? I think the I think the Starfarer fl uh, accelerates very very quickly. Yeah, too quickly. Um, but it's all, yeah a little bit, but it's also unladen, so yeah, I guess um that might help. And you think about how much how much weight is going to be on that thing when when there's liquid uh, yeah. fuel in all those tanks. Yeah. it's going to yeah. weigh a lot more. That is the thing. We still <clears throat> like none of the ships have any cargo at all yet. We don't know how the, the handling of stuff is going to change when there's actually stuff in it. Yeah, that, that's uh, it's something important to think about, too, because, like, a lot of these ships are... Yeah, they're big ships, but they're the engines are designed to push them when they're full, not yeah. when they're empty. Have you guys ever um, driven so... a car with, like, an... In, like, so you've got your normal car, right? Like, I own a Mazda 2, mm -hmm. and I'm driving along, and it, it feels fairly responsive, and, and it's fine. And then I load, you know, an, a friend's entire apartment into the back of it and try and drive I thought it. you were just going to say a friend, okay. Well, My I mean, friend. it's a Mazda 2, so yeah, a friend or two, and... <laughs> <laughs> it does not drive the same. No. So... Uh, well, actually, a good good example is I um, my first car, which I absolutely loved, was a 1989 Honda Civic, um, and it was pretty good most of the time when it was just me driving. But when I filled it up with people, like you go up a steep hill and you're like, I... you're slowing down as you go up the hill. I I've <laughs> actually been able to point. notice the difference in my Mazda's handling just filling it up from empty <laughs> so also yeah, we've now like become a car rate. show yes i mean i'm very qualified to talk about cars <laughs> that's my day job um what's our next question we should probably uh, our cars. next question <laughs> uh deflector asks what question would you ask Oh, ah, <laughs> ah, ah, you divide it by zero. Uh-oh. Is this a question? Ah. That is, that is an accurate question. It's, it's a genuine question. No, no, that's what I'd ask. Oh, is this that's a question? Is this a question? Yes. I would, I would ask, if you, if you gave me any question I could ask, CIG, for example. Um. No, ask us. What would you ask, ask you guys? us? Um, Why the hell would I want to ask you not anything? I don't know. <laughs> we have we have a, a patron Q and A in about thirty minutes. So, it's true. I mean, <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> what question would would we ask ourselves? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> Why do you keep getting up in the morning, shiver? <laughs> <laughs> wow. That well, went that dark places. Really... Thank, thank you, Deflector, <laughs> for taking us to dark places. Patreon.com slash real.org.sc 
Uh, so Fastcart asks another one. Commentary and hot takes. <laughs> Fastcart asks, uh, which is your favorite CIG office to visit and why? I've only been to LA, so I don't know. LA, probably? <laughs> when we went to LA, it was pretty subdued right after the... Everybody was gone. Everyone, Well, everyone was gone, and also it was after the... Um, <laughs> Yes, last year's Citizen Con, which, if you'll recall, was not quite as uh, outstanding and spectacular as previous ones. Um, I I think Foundry 42 UK was my favorite to visit between the two of them. Uh, I just, would really like to visit Frankfurt. Yeah, but UK was good. UK, I think, was special just because of the amount of thing. Like, they had one person talking to us, and then they had one person running ahead, being like, no, shut off that monitor, shut off that. No, can't show that. Erase this blackboard here. No, this we can't. <laughs> you had a very different experience. Yes. There were there like, were a lot of people. We saw these people, and they were like, well, we're just going to leave this on the screen, and if you look at it, you look at it. Well, there were a few times they did that, too. And there was one time where Vince and I were standing behind some guy watching him work, and then someone ran up and was like, no, 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 turn off the monitor. <laughs> and the guy was like, okay. Yep, and we were like... <laughs> I guess I'm not working for the next 20 minutes. <laughs> and we were like, that was cool. Not going to say anything that I saw, but, you know. That we saw naked vendors Sexy. and the weeds. Okay, we just went there. All right. Um, uh, I we, actually, actually, we actually did. That experience that, that I met, that I mentioned earlier with uh, with Vince and Jake there. Basically, we were standing there staring with our jaws like on the floor, and then yeah. Jared Jared came up and he's like, "No, no, 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 get away from there." Yep. And we're like. Okay, fine. I uh, I was there too. That was interesting, actually. It was so beautiful. It was. Um, so moving on, Lysergic asks, let's say CR gets the rights to Wing Commander suddenly. Would you rather they drop all the current content and create Wing Commander content or stick with what they oh. have now? Oh, it's God, no. I have it's no interest long. at all in Wing Commander. They're too Please. far along. God, no. Wing Commander was a bit campy for compared to Star Citizen. Yeah. I think I think they should put Wing Commander on arcade machines inside Star Citizen. That would be that great. Would be yes. Amazing. That would see, be see, that would be the use. that would be the appropriate use of a Wing Commander license at this point. Yes. Is to make it so you can play Wing Commander in the game. In like the the hollow not the hollow thing. Uh the the Simpod. Yeah. yeah. Uh so Christians in Space the Musical <clears throat> Asks, I hope I come across <laughs> someone in a game <laughs> in a constellation whilst I'm in a reclaimer, so that when I decide to be evil and destroy their ship for no reason, they tell me to eat a dick, and I'll just be able to see, I got you, fam, and eat their space I, who I don't know who this guy is, but I love him. <laughs> oh. Hey, oh, boy. It's not a question, but heart. Whoever are Christians in Space the Musical, PM me. I want to... I want to just. I just want to know who you are. I won't tell anyone. I just want to. You know are a genius, whoever you are. Every week, and it's wonderful. Oh, I, 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 I wonder if I. Yeah. Uh, Jake, this same, is. It could be the same person who was Jim. Oh, that's true. I do like Jim. Uh, so Azrael15 asks, Okay, does the F8 Lightning's cockpit look like it does in the concept images? I hate the cockpit design in the concept images. I know y'all can't answer this, though. Uh, I don't remember what the concept images look like at all. I don't remember what any of it looks like. I just remember thinking it looked cool. All right, uh, moving along. It was similar to the concept that we saw. was similar to the Hornet, wasn't it? So... Because I, I didn't see it, so if it's going to be, <sighs> it looked like it could have been two-man craft, so imagine the Hornet cockpit on steroids, maybe like the <laughs> Super Hornet. So, Fastcart asks another question. Uh, Jake, maybe you want to take this one? Okay. What are the benefits of being a Patreon subscriber to Relay.sc? 
Oh, well then, uh, right now, at least, we're going to add more stuff, but right now, um, Fast Car's going to come down hard on me for this one, because it's been two weeks and I haven't done anything. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you remembered it. I did remember. Uh, if you if you donate a dollar, you get a spot on our Wall of Thanks page, which has not been constructed yet <laughs> on, on it's, our website. It's one of our priorities. It's just not our yeah, top it's priority. A priority. Um, and if you donate $10 or more, one, you're crazy. Two, you get to join us for a Patreon Q&A sesh um, every month. Uh, once a month at an indeterminate time. Uh, this month you is You don't today. have to. I mean, you don't have to, but you can. We won't force you. Yeah. I don't know uh, why you would. It's pretty much just us and ghosts hanging out. So, I mean, if that <laughs> <laughs> Then you can come do that. Which, um, I mean, is still fun. Yeah. I mean, ghost oh, yeah. is my boy. Um, but... Yeah, that's what it was last time. It's probably what's what it's gonna be this time. That's okay. Yep. Uh, yeah. See, there he is. Hey, ghost. Thanks, <laughs> <Nice> ghost. <laughs> um. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh, that's pretty much it for for right now. Uh. Again, do it's crazy, guys. Let's think about this for a moment. Relay is only two months old, and we've already done a whole lot. And uh, we are yep. continuing to improve and build and make stuff. So uh, it's an ongoing process, and we appreciate your patience, endurance, and love. And support. And, and money. Uh, we're only going to keep doing it, and we're only going to get better. <laughs> so, uh, No asks, what do you think of the oh. upcoming hurricane? Think it will be the same as the original description or significantly different? I don't know. I think we might get blown away by it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? Shiver. I, I just... I... Piece of crap. Okay. Pain. Uh, next question. Pain. <laughs> just pain. Uh, yeah, fast... As, has it been two months already? Yep, as of yesterday. Uh... We have been a thing for two months. Yep. So, uh, Baskart um... asks, Have you played Conan Exiles? What are your thoughts on Jiggle Physics versus Wiggle Physics? This is a question Dolvac should have been asked. Uh, I... I, I have, love those Jiggle Wiggles. I have not played it yet. I have All played right. it. Um, uh, my girlfriend... Well, we were trying to figure out how to play together last night. Couldn't, because it's still kind of a broken game. But, um, decent. Shows promise. If fun can can continue to support it, then it'll be good. But the... the, the what's that? It reminds me of The Forest, which I greatly enjoyed. It, uh, the, the jiggle physics are actually not too bad. They're not as over the top as some they, other games. Are they on par with... Uh, Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball 3. Less. They're less, so I'm okay with them. Uh, the Wiggle Physics, however, uh, all her comment was, was uh, that looks like a snake. It's disgusting. It a keeps snake? moving. It keeps moving <laughs> under the loincloth. Why is it moving under the loincloth? What is going It looks like a snake! And then she ran out of the room crying, so. Wow. And then I put my pants back on. <laughs> Round. Hey! Someone quit that. Someone quit me immediately. <laughs> oh my god, that was brilliant. Okay. <laughs> no one's gonna beat that, so that's it. We've just got to be serious for now. Right? <laughs> oh. Com dot sc. <laughs> <sighs> okay, yeah, that just happened. Oh my God. <laughs> Fast car, oh. you better be on that crap. Oh, okay. Oh. Right. So, <laughs> our next question. <laughs> oh. For Eris, <laughs> you said that. It, you said you. Didn't, I you need said a minute. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
Okay. Sorry. Good. Oh. Uh, um, I think you may have misspoke on that one. Yeah. So the original Grib asks, Ferraris, you said that at Foundry 42, you saw them flying the Reclaimer two years ago in 2.0. Did you actually see them flying that? No, I meant the Retaliator. Sorry. That's uh, that's my mis misspoke. That's my misspeak. So, do you guys think... He's that... our boss. <laughs> Do you guys think that now that we have seen a Squadron 42 music ATV, that there should be that there's more Squadron 42 ATVs going to come? Maybe yes. even finishing with a trailer. Uh, I think Maybe. so. I don't think you're going to see it every week, but I think you'll see bits and pieces along the way. Sure. All of this, all of this feels like it was filmed like way ahead of time. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Maybe, I... maybe it's ramping up. Well. What? This is Go something ahead. that I think was supposed to happen last year and then didn't because they weren't going to make it. But there was talk about how once they're getting ready for Squadron 42, the marketing for Squadron 42 and, and the promotion of Squadron 42 is going to ramp up. And it has to because up to this point, we've had essentially none. And I think that this might be the start of it. I mean, they've got to release this year. And they've got to start ramping up the enthusiasm and ramping up the excitement yeah. and ramping up to to start undercutting all of the negativity that there is still out there surrounding Star Citizen. So I think that they're going to start. Bar Citizen Orlando, what's up? Apparently we are there also. Oh. Just keep the Hello, TV Bar Citizen Orlando. Uh, oh. That, I don't know why you're watching us, but hey! <laughs> Hey, I really, I, I really hey. like, I really like that 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 part with the whole loincloth bit was in Bar Citizen. I Orlando. hope that that was because that was that, that'd be, that that'd might be, be the the crowning uh, achievement of my life. It's <laughs> worth mentioning Bar Citizen uh, SC. Yeah, um, run by Rico from the base. Yes. Uh, uh, if you want to check out Bar Citizen in the area, check it out. Bar Citizen I, SC. I wish to pimp uh, an upcoming Bar Citizen. Uh, coming up on March 11th, um, let's see, uh, Fast Car, can you grab that link? We are gonna have to move venues at this point, aren't we? Because our, our max was 55, and we just got freaking 50 RSVPs, so, um, we're having a Bar Citizen in association, well, not in association, in... Conjunction? At Junction, at the same time as PAX East. <laughs> Uh, it'll be March 11th, uh, in Boston, Massachusetts. Boston. Um, right now, we are gonna be at the Jacob Worth Pub. It's a, it's a German pub, and it's awesome. Uh, there's an old guy who plays, uh, famous songs on piano every Saturday, so I hope he's there when we're there. That would be sweet. That's awesome. Um, uh, I'm gonna be there. Fast Cart's gonna be there. Um, there may or Discord may not be some relay uh, swag oh, there. Could be swag. Um, Disco Lando and and uh, Tyler are gonna be there. Um, yeah, it's gonna be awesome. Sure, uh, hang out with Fastcart. It. Also, hang out with uh, that guy Jake. Even though he's. A... <laughs> yep. I mean, don't. <laughs> In a corner, it'll be fine. Um, there's. Uh, there's a, oh, I'm over here. There's a link in the chat over there. Fastcart just posted it, uh, if you want to come. And you are going to be in the area, uh, in the second week of March. Uh, go RSVP. Do it. And we wish to meet you there and tell, tell me I said hello. That'll be weird. Uh, so Totally Shiver Bathory asks, what's the gray and red thing behind Jake? Uh, that's a weed whacker. <laughs> it is it's a it's a it's a vacuum. Oh. Looks like a weed whacker. It does look like a weed whacker it's because not stole my name. Uh, <laughs> because the vacuum itself is up here. And this is just an attachment. You Americans are weird. Yeah. It's God. cheap and it works really well. Um Likey Nibs asks what are your impressions of ATV after the last episode? Oh, it was great. Do more. I've, never, I've really liked it since they changed formats again. 
as long as they keep the studio update every week and then do yep. a deep dis like deep dive like this into something yes. excellent both of them. It's, it's yeah they need to have both parts but yeah. they, I've, I've liked it so far we need to know what all the studios are doing and we need to know more about the actual details the nitty gritty of Star Sorry. Citizen <laughs> <laughs> Hey, um, Sean's in chat. Hey, Sean. Uh, Sean is a level designer on Star Marine. Hey, Sean. Hey, Sean. Thanks for coming to watch us. We're as far as we you apologize. I'm so, so sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's very eh? talented. He makes beautiful levels in things. I believe he worked on Watch Dogs before, if I remember right. I think. Maybe. Maybe. We'll find out. Uh, Fastcart asks, what do you have against the Anvil Porcupine? <laughs> <laughs> you broke Shiver. It's fine. It's fine. Carry on. Okay, so um, Sean Noonan, our viewer for some reason, uh, worked, on, worked on Far Cry Primal, Far Cry 4, Watch Dogs, Crackdown 2, and Wheelman. Wow! I that have to say, and a half. Far Cry Primal might actually be my favorite of the Far Cry games in a long time. I haven't played it. Should I play it? It it feels different, and it feels more like it makes sense than the other Far Cry. Like, Far Cry 4, you hunt a white tiger, and then use its white tiger pelt to increase your carrying size, for like, your ammo capacity for your pistol, right? Which yeah, makes no makes sense. Back. But But that makes no sense. You don't make a bag out of a white... In Far Cry Primal, sure. at least, you're you're hunting the animal, and then you're actually making it into, like, an arrow sure. quiver. Also, I, I liked it. It's good. I like Far Cry 4 a lot. Far Cry 4 uh, was good. I, I, it's an expansion pack for Far Cry 3, but that's okay. I, I really like the feeling of throwing a spear through a guy and seeing him tumble over and then running after it, picking out the spear again, and then start stabbing people. Stab, 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 Stephanie, 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 I mean... Oh, God. What's going he on? He enjoys murder. Uh, <laughs> he doesn't. I so, mean, so I, I gotta ask the next question immediately after that. Okay. Um, how many times does Eris have to go to the doctor for mysterious injuries? Woohoo! This question was asked by... Someone that I cannot seem to... Brevels. Um, I should go to the doctor more frequently to check on my multiple injuries. Um, my shoulder, if I go like this, it cracks every, like... Don't go like that. 20 or 30 times. Uh, my wrist is in constant pain. My neck doesn't work. Uh, but instead of going to a doctor, I just go play hockey. Sean Noonan worked on Star Wars Connect. His <laughs> crowd treatment. Oh my god! The greatest game ever made! Star is that Citizen the one is where... Good hands, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Worth it for... For Han Solo Michael Jackson. Oh. <laughs> I was about to ask the one if, they, if that's the one where Han Solo... Game yes. Or... Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, Sean, it's good to have you on the Star Citizen team, I suppose. What are you doing over there? Uh, my how problems far, with Watch how Dogs. How was not that it. an elephant? <laughs> it's actually six point five. <laughs> okay, so very. Understood. It's a strong. I've had two. Uh, this one was five point four. <laughs> this one was I don't know five. So I, I, I just want to agree with Tofu, Dare, Fleischer, Monkey Island 2, greatest game ever made. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost in agreement there. Greatest game ever made. Possibly Neverwinter Nights. Uh, I or think Portal the 1. Game, the greatest game ever oh. made is actually Shaq Fu. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I like Thank Cool Spot. Very much. So, I actually really like the next question, and I think it's an interesting topic. Legend uh, of Zelda the Ocarina of Time. That's a very good game, absolutely. And fun funny enough, it actually was the best fishing game out there for many years. Yep. A long time. Um, Sorry. <clears throat> Ocarina of Time? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yep. They have a fishing mini game, and the fishing mini game in in Zelda was way better than most dedicated fishing games. Yeah. Anyway, um, when the documentary for the making of Star Citizen is released, how many hours do you think it will be? This is from Fastcart. How many hours? What will be? Sorry. The documentary the making, making of Star, Star Citizen. Citizen documentary. The making of Star Citizen documentary. The making of Star One. Citizen documentary. Maybe two. Unless I heard this fish. crazy notion someone thought they'd have to split it up into like different parts and like the first part would be one hour long and they'd do all these different sections. I, I, I can't series. remember who that was, Fast Cart. <laughs> I, I kind of agree with that. Like I think they could spend an hour just on the history of Chris and what got Star Citizen started. Like I, I could um, see them doing like an I hour think... per year almost. I think what what it'll probably be is a mini series. It's um, gonna be quite long, yeah. So they could make like um like a I think maybe five to ten part mini series about it. Um, it's a very rude question coming up, but yeah, is there should be interesting. Oh yeah, <laughs> but it's not next. The next one is who thought that the audio Reddit. That the audio Reddit with the Idris Bo Cannon was CIG's work. How did you like it? Um, hey, I know that feel, y'all. Whoever posted that and was like, hey, this is a cool thing, and everyone thought it was official CIG content. <laughs> hey, uh, call me. We can bond over the fact what, that our did, content... Jake, did you do something that everyone thought was... Oh, I did. All I did was make a stupid image inside Premiere and then export it as a PNG and post it to Twitter, and everyone freaked out! <laughs> Nikara, right, I think you've also how been, been... I saw it, and I thought there was another episode of Sherlock coming up. <laughs> and that's how Relay was born, ladies and gentlemen. And Nikara, I believe you've saying? also been called a, a member of CIG several times before. Yeah, it seems like whenever I post a popular article, some magazine picks it up and they're like, this is from directly from a CIG employee, and it's like, uh... Journalists don't read. No? Come on. <laughs> that's true, um, I don't. Now, 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 actually answering the question, I didn't think it was the Idris Bo Cannon really because I was sort of the the first thing that I thought when I, I saw that is posted it. Where the hell did this come from? And then who posted it? And then on top of that, um, it didn't sound right for a rail gun, even though it sounded cool. It sounded cool. It was not a rail gun sound. For me, I, I am... think it was. Uh, where was it? I think it's the the tag on it that said like community content or something that, that well kinda... yeah but it didn't have that tag at the beginning so that's when i saw it yes uh so the next question is i was too busy this week trying to get a new job to pay much attention to star citizen make sure you get that eh? i want to <laughs> why does uh nakara like lincoln park was he dropped on his head daily at some point in his early life this is from zane please don't fire me <laughs> <laughs> I, I also like Linkin Park. Um, Linkin Park actually I, has one of my favorite songs. I'm trying to remember which it is. I like Linkin Park. I like a uh, lot of people. I never... the yeah, that's the one. Yeah. Um, I really like Linkin Park a long time ago. Their early stuff was uh, preferable to me. I also really like uh, Fort Minor, which was done by one of the members and a few other people. Um... Meteora was pretty good. Meteora was really good. Their most recent stuff has sort of waned in my interest. That sort of happens with a lot of bands. You know what my favorite band right now these, is? These are like these these things on my wall are actually very old, so that's why. <laughs> the mountain goats. Go listen the to the sunset tree. Uh, Fantabulous I'm album. I'm listening to State Champs right now because I'm in an old school pop punk mood. I'm all about the, the sunset tree. Mountain goats. A plus. I discovered Swamp Rock. <laughs> Shiver, I need to ask you a question. <laughs> about metal. Because I figure yeah. you're the most qualified of I, all of us. Before you do Are that, you... Jake. Before you do that, Jake. I'd just like to let everyone in chat know that this is happening because we've run out of questions. It's your fault. Yep. Go ahead, Jake. Shiver, Shiver. Are you familiar with a band called Hate Beak? <laughs> No. 
Shiver, these are the great. This is the greatest metal band that ever lived. It is a metal band that has a parrot as their lead what? singer. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Interested. It's. I heard um the other day. I heard it, an Italian black metal band that only play on acoustic guitars. That's what? awesome. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually really good. Oh well. That's, that's uh, impressive. Hate, hate Beak, Hate Beak is the best. Shiver, you need to investigate. They are my oh. favorite metal band. <laughs> it's just the parrot. It's not even that the the parrot doesn't like say words. It just goes. <laughs> <laughs> does it, does it do it like that's on command on time, <laughs> or does it just do it randomly? Uh, maybe. <laughs> Like how do you how do you perform that live? Does the parrot what if the parrot's shy one day? Does it just sit there and go? Oh, oh. Polly want a cracker and to worship Satan. <laughs> and all of the album titles have the best names. They're all bird puns. All of them. <laughs> all, like, like apocalypse Satan. Metal albums, but bird puns. <laughs> Parakeet your body in hell. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Here, hold on, hold on. Let's see. I While need, you're I looking that up, uh, Miami BAT asked uh, the Baker system. Any of you guys dare race it? It's filled with dangerous ice crystals that can impair instrumentation and severely hamper visibility, etc. Yeah, uh, okay. I'd like to do it. I'd die. But... Easy page. Do it blindfolded as well for a lot. Might yeah. at that point. I'll Pretty just much. do it in a reclaimer and drive right through it. Fair enough. In, so we... in seriousness, though, I I don't know about doing it as a race, but I am interested in doing challenging piloting things. That that I hope is going to be a thing. Aside from um, uh, jump points, I I hope there are going to be weird things. You know, not just like an asteroid belt that's a bit static, but. Um, Chris Wahistrom says they released the album Number of the Beak on June 26, 2015. <laughs> Number of the Beak! That's the best album name! Okay, oh, oh, Hate Beak yeah. is a death metal band formed by Blake Harrison and Mark Sloan featuring Waldo, a Congo African grey parrot. Hate Beak is the only band to have an avian vocalist. They never <laughs> tour, so as not to torture the bird. That answers your Good. question. That's, I appreciate that. Uh, okay, here's the best part. Hate Beak is signed to Reptilian Records. <laughs> oh, oh my. Oh, jeez. Uh, the band's sound has been described as a jackhammer being ground in a compactor. Uh, Hate Beak made its second record with Kenanus, a band whose lead singers were two pit bulls. <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, so, good. Azrael asks a good one here, are actually. Uh, are you fine with the current concept of the Tavaran having feathers? Personally, I hope in the end that they drop the feathers. It carries too much of an Earth aesthetic for me personally. I like my aliens to be fully alien. Um... I think what? I think having the Tavaran have fe feathers is actually very alien. Like, I I mean, feathers kind of make sense. They're how you would fly in an atmosphere, right? Yeah. So, yeah, I I don't know. I like them. Tavaran are bird people. The I, the I should also be John or turtle people. The Vandul are reptile lizard they're, they're people. Like oh, fishy. they're hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. The Tavarin have feathers, and no one's gonna say they're a death metal band. No, I want an I... all Tavarin. Well, now we now we have to now we have to make a death metal band called the Tavarin. And yes, the Gion the and the Vandul. Once we get those, once we get the languages. There you go. Death metal band for each race. Yeah. Though death I don't, metal I don't know. Band is famous for knowing, you know, for everyone knowing their lyrics. I don't think that the Banu would have a death metal band. I think the Banu would be more, like, smooth jazz. Yeah. Actually, I this I know this sounds weird, but um, one of the writers did say he pictures what the races listen to, and that's going to be reflected in game. 
Oh. And he was like, he, he pictured the Jean listening to very Baroque and organized things. The Banu more like jazz. N- no one ever mentions metal. Because metal's not real music. Hey, oh, now. Burning a fire, sir. <laughs> oh, dear God. What have you done? And I probably metal, know many songs metal about bands that. are the heralds of the coming apocalypse. David. Metal bands, <laughs> metal bands are classical musicians who couldn't cut it, and so they went oh! to metal. Uh, why? Can I, can I direct this back to the top? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yes. Before um, I have to crucify him. I, I wanted to. I wanted to mention that. In Chris Roberts' games, he almost always designs the aliens to be animal-like. Yeah. Um, they're they're always in some type of animal. So that's sort of what I think you're going to see from Star Citizen, for the most part. Maybe not purely. It's but... such a catch-22, though, because you, we could never, ever truly design something that hey, it's looks better than alien because Rex, we have where... no concept of what an actual alien is I'm not making sense again. No, I, I understand what you mean. It's better okay. than Star Trek, where all the aliens are just humans, but slightly different. Well, the yeah, these are, these are blue the humans. These something. humans have ridges on their forehead. These humans have slightly longer ears. These humans have ridges on their forehead. These humans have ridges on their nose. Uh, these humans have a spoon on their forehead. Uh, <laughs> yeah! Spoon <head>. uh, <laughs> So I got, there's a great question here. There's a great question here from Fastcart. Who writes the script for Relay Station? I could use some pointers. <laughs> what? This What's is a revenge script? for earlier, isn't it, Fastcart? <laughs> Thanks a lot. Hey, Thanks, uh, um, biggest Bennis in the chat is brand new to Star Citizen. Welcome. To yeah, the welcome, Earth, my friend. Unfortunately, you, you've you come here? right at the end of our show. Oh wow! It is four o'clock. It's four isn't o'clock. It? Um. Hey. So I'm gonna pimp all the things. Because Do it. Dave will, David will start talking if I don't. Yeah, I so, will. Uh. Hey, everybody. Uh. Hope you enjoyed the show. If you enjoyed it, you should hit that follow button right up there. Uh. If you want to know when we go live. Um. If you missed the show, uh, it will be archived. You can catch that later today, or you can watch it on YouTube. Or on your various podcast getting devices, um, iTunes, Google, and etc. Et um, you can also, uh, yeah, subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, go to our website relay.sc. Um, if you want to support us for some reason. Uh, you should go to patreon.com slash relay underscore sc. It's every, everything is relay underscore sc, except our website, which is, has a dot instead, and except our Discord channel, which has neither. <laughs> but we love all of you, and, uh, you smell nice today, and you should go out in the world and, uh, find yourself uh, go do good things go be good people and go be positive in where you are and where you're going with your life and the lives of those around you i think that's enough for today i think so too Whoa, 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 whoa! <laughs> Hang on, I, I've got. Oh, I, oh, I, I'm oh, doing oh. a new show next week. We're, ah, we're doing oh, yeah. once a month. Uh, Rico has let me take over the Friday night slot once a month. So first Friday usually is going to be the faux Friday night show. Next week, next Friday is going to be our first one. We're we're, we're mimicking it, so we'll have Eric on or someone from Relay doing the news uh, at a slightly different time, and it's just going to be us chilling out, having a chat, talking Star Citizen. Can you do another yeah, another slot, maybe the second Friday of each month, dressed in a cat suit, and do the fur Friday night show? <laughs> no. But we got regular content but I like every content. week as well. Yes! We got the articles, we got the fiction, we got the transcripts, the only place on the internet to find Star Citizen transcripts. And Unless we hope you that... go and 
you know, watch them on CIG's YouTube videos because we give them well, our transcripts. Well, also did that. Yes. Yeah. So thank you, everyone, for your support. We love you. We'll see you next week. Goodbye. See you in the verse. <laughs>